takeaways or most relevant things I can see that would relate to what you discuss in your book would I think would be due to um, would be in regards to the topic of stress. Now, because you talk about you know how we tend to focus. And in professional life and professional organizations, especially, you know, we we tend to focus on people's weaknesses and kind of drilling them on these weaknesses until they get better at them. And the realities of it is that if someone is just not talented in a certain area, innately not talented, you can drill them twenty four seven, and really, realistically, the best you can hope for is maybe they get to average. Maybe, right? And by doing that, and by focusing on that, and by spending your time and their time and energy focusing on something that they're just not good at, and most likely don't enjoy doing, hence they're not good at it, just amplifies stress. And before you were just mentioning about the dangers in the world back in the early human days, right? And yes. There's no tigers right now, eating us, but you can argue that stress and stress-related illnesses have killed way more people in modern day than tigers ever did. So the dangers, I think, are still very real in modern society in terms of our health, and a lot of this is related to stress. Stress is, this is through medical research and scientific data, is really the number one cause of. Most of the vast majority of illnesses people end up having, it all starts from stress. But because it's really hard to quantify stress and it can't really be measured, it goes kind of unlooked and unchecked. But I think what you talk about in terms of kind of switching that paradigm, switching the perspective, and focusing instead on your talents, and sometimes these talents can be hidden, but things you're good at and leveraging that. And spending more of your time working on those things, that actually could go a long way in reducing people's stress and maximizing their performance. Well, Justin, you summarize you summarize it better than I do in the book. Actually, I'm I'm knocked out. Uh, you are you are absolutely right. Maybe one of the problems with a lot of this material is that it sounds a little bit esoteric, right? And and for the, those of the, for the people who know me, um, they will tell you that I'm I'm the least esoteric guy uh, in Europe. That, that that's not my message here. It's not some kind of um I have to check into some kind of spiritual happiness or whatever. That's not my message. Other people have similar messages, and that's fine. Uh, the message here is based on 40 years of grounded scientific research that shows us that we are more productive, we are more creative, and we have register fewer sick days and fewer conflicts, and we enter into less stress. That is scientifically proven through study after study after study if we focus on people's talents and strengths. If we create an environment, particularly in the work environment, where people have the opportunity to work on in areas where they like to work, where they have enjoyment, where they have some kind of intrinsic motivation, but also that they're good at, lest we forget we are different, right? We're all very different. The tall guy can reach the, the, the fruit on the trees easier than the shorter person. OK, it's not that the shorter person is a worse person. They just don't have a natural uh, accidental proclivity for picking fruit. And the, the person with more fast twitch fibers in their legs was probably better in the old, um, you know, uh, when we were hunting and gathering. They were probably better t for hunting because they can chase after the animal and catch it better. But, but I don't know, one of the person, people in our tribe maybe had softer hands, so maybe had a n better natural proclivity for staying by the fire and looking after the children. We understand and we appreciate um, physical difference and physical talents. We appreciate those very quickly. We seem to have a very fine eye for that. Oh, he's a big guy. He's a smaller guy. He's a strong guy. She's um, fast. We seem to be very good at that. And yet when it comes to cognitive talent, we are awfully neglectful of that. And we expect, particularly in the professional world, for people to be master of, uh, sorry, jack of all trades. You know, you, you wouldn't expect the small guy to pick fruit. So why am I expecting the person who has a wonderful ability for rhetoric and performance to be crunching numbers and to be good at it? And that leads on to your point, Justin. That's where the stress comes from. 
the the absolute epidemic of stress that we've seen in the last 60 years or so has stemmed from this this business cultural fascination with creating executives who can pretty much do everything right you are expected today if you work in some kind of classic white collar work i don't know what you're doing but if you're sitting in front of a computer and that's 90 percent of your job you are irrespective of your industry irrespective of the product or the service that your company delivers nine times out of ten you are expected to do the following and probably not only limited to the following but some of the following Create good presentations, deliver good presentations, uh, chair effective meetings, be a good meeting participant, write reports, um, crunch numbers and understand complex data and be able to find patterns in that. Communicate upwards effectively to staff, communicate downwards effectively and sideways, um, have uh, wonderful customer service uh, skills, be empathetic to the staff around you to be able to, do you get the point, right? I could go on all night. We expect our executive to be all of to be good at all of those, and we just know that they're not. And so, what happens is we force people to meet deadlines, and maybe punctuality is not a natural cognitive talent of theirs. And so, what do they do? They stress and they fight and they bite and they scratch to meet that deadline. And what are they doing? They're investing so much energy and so much time in achieving something that will probably like you say, just achieve minimum standard, right? Acceptable standard. 